Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Really quick, before this episode gets going, if you've not seen my previous episode on my Killer Wave, no seriously, Arami of the Dead Tide deck, make sure you check that episode out first. Because this episode is the Break the Bank version of that episode, and uh, yeah, uh, it might not make all that much sense unless you've seen that previous episode. So, I'll wait here for a few seconds. Uh, those of you who have not seen that, please go real quick, and then come back. Okay, cool. We're on the same page. Welcome to the Break the Bank of Arami the Dead Tide. And yeah, for those of you that don't know what a Break the Bank is, basically I take one of my decks and up the budget all the way up to $100. But like that previous episode, this episode comes to you courtesy of Mike, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Mike. So again, Mike, thank you so much. And again, for that personalized deck, Mike wanted a deck built around Arami, focusing on self nil to encore awesome creatures. And really quick, just a quick reminder of what Arami of the Dead Tide does, a 1-4 Merfolk Wizard for 1 blue black. It has tap, exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have, tar creature card in your graveyard gains encore until end of turn, the encore cost equal to its mana cost. So, mill yourself, get creatures into your graveyard, encore them out, and get multiple copies, and do some pretty incredible things. And now that we're caught up and all on the same page, let's jump into what cards we're adding into this deck with the Break the Bank version. First up, and one card that Mike specifically mentioned, which is a fantastic card for this deck, let's add in Sundial the Infinite. It's an artifact for two that has pay one tap and the turn act based ability only during your turn. So essentially, by ending your turn, you're going to be exiling all spells and abilities on the stack. You discard down your maximum hand size, damage wears off, and this turn and until end of turn effects end. Essentially, the way that this card works with a Rami is this. Again, when you encore a creature, you exile it from your graveyard, and you get copies of it equal to the opponents that you have. Now, normally you'd have to sacrifice those creatures even if they do survive combat, but again, with Sundial, you essentially say, well, we're just going to end the turn instead. So those token copies that did survive now don't have to be sacrificed, they stick around permanently. So yeah, for just one mana, again, once this is in play, it can do a ton of work for you. Speaking of which, Teferi's Veil can help out in a somewhat similar way. It's an enchantment for one in a blue that says, whenever any creature you control attacks, it phases out at end of combat. So again, phasing out is kind of a weird rule. It's kind of like, this thing isn't here, but it is. So again, since the creature technically isn't there, well, it gets around that sacrifice trigger at the end of the turn, because it phases out at the end of combat. Essentially, each of these are fantastic cards at keeping our creature tokens around. And speaking of keeping things around, let's talk about Lightning Greaves. It's an equipment for two that has equipped zero and says equipped creature has haste and shroud. So this can help Arami out in multiple ways. Again, this has equipped zero, so right when our commander gets in play, we attach this to it, and we can tap our commander right away for that ability, because this gives our commander haste. On top of that, by giving our commander shroud, well, we can't target our commander, but that's really no big deal, and our opponents can't target, which is a big deal. So again, being able to activate our commander right away and making it so that we can protect our commander, yeah, this can do a lot of work in this deck. And speaking of doing a lot of work in this deck, let's move on to cards like Ultra of Dementia, Stitcher Supplier, and Bury Live. Alter Dementia is a fantastic free sacrifice outlet. It has sacrificed a creature. Target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. Basically, mill equal to power. So again, even if we don't have one of those ways to actually keep our creature tokens around, we can utilize them by sacrificing them to mill ourselves further. So instead of just sacrificing them at the end of the turn and not getting value out of them, we can get a ton of value out of them by milling ourselves and getting more creatures into our graveyard. Speaking of which, there's Citra Supplier, which is just a 1-1 for a single mana that has when it enters the battlefield or dies for the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. So by encoring this and getting three copies of it, again, we mill ourselves for nine in total to start, and then again, when it either dies or we sacrifice it, we mill ourselves for nine more. So 18 cards milled for one mana. Yeah, sign me up. 
but we can actually get a lot of the right cards into our graveyard with something like Buried Alive. It says search your library for up to three creature cards, put them in your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So yeah, for just three mana, tutor out three creatures and get them right to where we want them to be, yeah, that's going to be really good in a lot of scenarios. And speaking of the right creatures, we can also utilize some new ones from the new Kamigawa with Junji and Kairi. Junji is a 5-5 with Flying and Menace, and when it dies, we choose one. Each opponent discards two cards and loses two life, or put target non-creature card from a graveyard on the battlefield under control, you lose two life. So again, when we encore this, we're getting three copies, and again, three 5-5 Flying Menaces, that sounds like a lot of fun. On top of that, when they die in combat or we sacrifice them, we get those triggers, which can be fantastic. Again, even if we just choose that first trigger three times, each of our opponents has to discard six cards and loses six life. And yeah, that's basically wiping out their hands and draining them for a ton. Or, you know, we can reanimate some non-dragons as well, and that can be great too. In a similar way, there's Kairi the Swirling Sky, a 6-6 with flying in Ward 3. When it dies, we choose one return any number of target non-land permanents with total mana value six or less to their owner's hands. So this can bounce back a ton of things, and again, keep in mind because the way this is worded, we can essentially bounce any number of tokens that we want that our opponents might control, basically for free. And then the second one is mill six cards and return up to two instant and or social cards from your creator to your hand. So we can mill ourselves for a ton and get a lot of things back as well. But of course, another fantastic upgrade is Massacre Worm, a 6-5 that has when it enters the battlefield, creature's opponent control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And of course, whenever a creature in opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. So again, by encoring this, and again, assuming three opponents, so three copies, all of our opponent's creatures get minus six, minus six until end of turn. So that's going to wipe out a ton of creatures. And again, on top of that, for each of their creatures that die, they lose six six life. So this can take out our opponent's armies and our opponents at the same time. But of course, we also have some other fantastic triggers with things like Sepulchral Primordial, Age of Treachery, and Grave Titan. The Primordial is a 5 4 worth Intimidate that has when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard on the battlefield under your control. So again, encore this, get three copies, and reanimate, what, nine creatures? Yeah, that can be an incredible play. Speaking of which, Age of Treachery has when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent, and on top of that, begin of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. So encore this, steal three things, and then at the beginning of your end step, stack your triggers accordingly so that you can draw three cards for each Agent of Treachery. So again, basically draw nine. And then Grave Titan is a 6-6 with Death Touch, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, put two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens on the battlefield. So get three of these in play, get six zombie tokens, swing with three of these, you know, 6-6 six, six Death Touchers, and get six more zombie tokens. What's not to love? And speaking of love, of course, I had to include in this upgraded budget Wayfarer's Bobble, which unfortunately is still not under a dollar. In fact, I believe it's around 250 at this point. And unfortunately, although it is a fantastic card, it was not reprinted in any of the pre-cons. So yeah, wizards, get on it. Reprint this card in pre-cons and in upcoming sets, please. Thank you. It, of course, is an artifact that costs one and it has paid two and tap sacrifice to search for library for a basic land carpet that card on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. So this is essentially turn two land ramp for any deck out there in Commander. And again, usually that's, you know, restricted to green. But yeah, this is a fantastic card. Wizards, reprint it. And speaking of lands, we're also going to be upgrading some of our lands in this deck with some of the new Kamigawa Neon Dynasty lands with Takanuma, Abandoned Mire, and Anawara Soaring City. Takanua is a legendary land that taps for a black, and it has channel for three and a black. So we discarded two mill three cards and return a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. This ability costs one to activate for each legendary creature you control. So this can mill us to get more creatures into our graveyard, and also get us a creature back to our hand that we might want back to our hand instead of encoring it. And then Anawara is also a legendary land that can tap for a blue, and it says channel three and a blue. By discarding it, we bounce target artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker back to its owner's hand, and again, this ability costs one to activate for each legendary creature we control. So with each of these lands, just adding some extra flexibility to lands that enter the battlefield untapped, yeah, these uh, can be very big in the right scenarios. But of course, with this upgraded budget by adding cards in, we've got to take some out. And I will mention this like I always do, just because I'm taking cards out does not mean that these are bad cards, it just means that our upgrades are better for this deck. And yeah, you've got to take some cards out because you've got a maximum of 100 cards. So we're going to be taking out cards like Star Compass, Firebind Vessel, Wind Reader Sphinx, Rain of Revelation, Body Double, Wall of Lost Thoughts, and Atris Oracle of Half Truths. Again, not bad cards, we just need to make some room. Speaking of which, we're also going to be taking out Hex, Mirror Battlesphere, Whelming Wave, Dream Eater, Displacement Wave, and Ulamog's Crusher. Whew, okay, now I'm out of breath. Anyways, a couple more. And of course, these are some more simple cunts. We're adding two lands in, one that has ray black, one that has ray blue. So let's take out a swamp and let's take out an island. But now that we've talked about every single card that we're adding into the deck and every single card we're taking out of the deck, let's talk about the price. 
Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, with this upgraded budget, we up the budget all the way to $100 and we come just in under that budget at $99.60 with an estimated cost. And again, in this estimated cost, that does include basic lanes at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you've already got those basics, well, there's some extra savings there. And if you want even more potential savings, try buying this deck on TCG Player and utilizing the heavily played and damaged cards because you might save even more, and as always, those cards need a home too. Though, do keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.